Right. So, hey guys, and welcome to episode 10 of BH Live, where I will be interviewing Natalie Gray. So I'm just going to do a quick introduction to her so you can find out who she is. Like I said in my post, I'm super excited to interview Natalie. She's a singer-songwriter, and she is one of the most talented and hardworking people I know, but also one of my best friends. So this is going to be really good. Natalie Gray is a singer-songwriter from London and former front woman of synth band LAD, also known as LAD. Natalie has supported the likes of Kaiser Chiefs and Penfest and Becky Hill at London Pride, as well as touring a musical with David Hasselhoff. Natalie is the vocalist featured on the Eddie Craig and Charles Hedges track, You're No Good For Me, and the Billy the Kid and Joel Corey track, Get What You Give. Featured on Radio 1, Capital FM, and Celebs Go Dating, Natalie is currently working on her follow-up single, Check Out Her Music on... Sorry, I said that wrong. Check Out Her Original Music and Dance Track on Spotify. So, guys, you need to go and follow her on Spotify the minute this is over, okay? Stay on the line first. So, let me bring Natalie on. And, obviously, by the magic of technology, she will appear on the screen any second now. Oh, that was so well timed. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. That was really lucky. I literally was like leaning over and then it was like, you're live. <laughs> you're live. Ah! We are so doing the curly gang today. Look at us two. Oh. We are, we are like rocking it. Yours is a little bit brighter than mine though. I mean, I, I did pride. <laughs> oh, hey, babe. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I did pride yesterday. So a little bit out of control today. I oh, know, that's good, mate. Rock it like it's meant to be. So I ask yeah, everyone I'm... this question at the beginning. Tell us your life, sto- life story in five minutes. Go. Jeez. Um, well, you kind of all said it. I'm, I'm Natalie Gray. I'm a singer-songwriter. I'm originally from Reading, which is currently where I am still at the moment during this lockdown time. Um, I, went... <laughs> yeah. um, I went to Conti. Um, so I did the whole musical theatre thing, mm-hmm. uh, graduated from there many moons ago and started writing as kind of a release kind of thing because I was getting quite frustrated with the musical theatre industry um, and then kind of realised that actually I'm quite, yeah, big up Conti, baby, <laughs> Conti girl for life. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of realised at this whole writing and singing thing. Um, I worked with some really cool people who kind of gave me the confidence to do it. And yeah, I've I've done a few tours. I've done a few new musicals and kind of I always come back to singing and songwriting. That's my dream. I love dancing and I love acting, but singing, songwriting, that's that's where I'm at. And you know me, I'm far too crazy to kind of do something else. I this is where I stand. Um, So, yeah, that's about it. And I love dogs. And I love even, dogs. Even, look, this is my friend today. <laughs> For the people on the podcast, we're seeing Natalie's dog right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot this. My, my tiny shih tzu is here with me today. So, so I'm going to ask you, what, what were you like as a kid and a teenager? Oh, a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Um, I was, I'm sorry if you can hear people outside. I'm currently locked down with my family, who I adore to pieces. They are... <laughs> I'm a quiet one. The fam. Oh dear, that's not good. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, yeah, as a kid, teenager, nightmare. I mean, I, I've always kind of been out there. I've never really gone with conventional or normal. Um, but I kind of do have my parents to blame for that. I remember telling them as a kid I want to be a mermaid and I wouldn't eat fish because I am one with the mermaids. And instead of being like, you're an idiot, my mum was like, that is a very fair reason. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of their fault. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I've always been very independent. I've kind of always done my own thing and not really given a crap what people think of me. I've just, my main thing is I think we should all be happy. So completely agree with you on that. So I mean, on the other, I was a massive nerd at school, which a lot of people probably wouldn't guess because I act a bit dappy, but when it comes to, like, Greek, like, Greek architecture, Greek mythology, I'm your girl. You need me on, <laughs> who wants to be a million? I'm there. That's the most random thing in the world. And I didn't even know that about you. How did I not know that about you? 
Oh, but when I get drunk, I come out with so many Greek like facts, and everyone's just like, "Who are you?" I'm like, mm. I feel like we haven't got drunk together yet. Maybe that's something we need to um, fix. Have we? We had a few drinks to that club in Soho sometime when we were like Tashi Ballman in that. Yes, yes. <laughs> Big shout out to Tashi. Um, so, what what was the moment you decided singing was a career for you? Do you know what? That is such a difficult question because I probably sang before I could talk is kind of how my life is. Um, I guess kind of the real moment was I remember doing like a show at school and always being the quiet one in regards to my family because my family are very loud and very like fun and cool. Um, sorry, I'm moving around because my dog just keeps crying. So I'm opening the doors. Um <laughs> And I guess I did this kind of showcase and it was a moment where, sounds really big headed, but the spotlight was on me. And I was like, no one's booing, no one's saying, shut up or like, stop being an idiot. And I was like, this is, okay, I like this. And actually I feel like this, this is good for my mental health. This is good for my confidence. And I was like, oh, can I, am I allowed to do this as a career? Is that a thing? And yeah, so I mean, I think I was about 13, 12, 13, and was a bit like, oh, we're not just playing around. This is, I can do this. So yeah, I just liked it. I went to, clicked. Yeah, and I think it's, I went to like Italian Conti Associates as well as a kid. I begged my mum to send me because um, it was a, a lot of money and when we weren't, I'm not from a, like, a rich family or anything. And she was like, oh, if it's something you really want, you can go for a couple of lessons all we can afford kind of thing. And obviously I did like commercial dance and ballet and I was like, yeah. And I was like, as much as I love that, I wasn't getting the satisfaction and blessed. There was this incredible singing teacher there who I used to sneak into her lessons for free. Sorry. <laughs> um, and I just loved, I loved it. I loved the freedom of it. I love mucking about and nothing's kind of wrong in singing. If you want to mm. go somewhere with it, if you want to do something. And I was like, this, this is it. This is me. This is a bit of me rather than, I, I love dancing, but you know me, I'm too much of a tit to stand still as well. <laughs> I can imagine like, you trying to stay in your box. Is. Natalie, stay in your box. No. Literally, like, I love, my ballet teacher at Conti's, I don't know if she still teaches there, Mrs. Banks. I bloody love that woman. Miss Banks was incredible and she had the patience of a saint with me. Because I was like, oh, la, 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 la. And she's like, no, point the freaking toes and shut up. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're still too scared to come into my classes. Yeah, because everyone's really cool in your class. <laughs> other other cool. than me, other than me. They're all cool. I'm the idiot at the front right. making a wally of myself. Oh, yeah, obviously. I know you. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> we need to take up some one-on-ones and make some TikTok videos or something. I'm not cool enough to <laughs> <laughs> also, I have been doing that like, quite, and I take the mickey the whole time and then you laugh at me too because you're like I know I can take the piss out of you and I'm like yeah yeah so when you, when, you, when you finally get me into singing lessons you can also take the piss out of me so it's fine Thank you. Thank we, you. we've got to make that happen maybe we should do a zoom singing lesson I think that should be I a mean, thing when you was I was sat on your sofa in, when you had your flat in Soho and you were literally just singing We Will Rock You and songs. I was just like, what are you doing? And he was just like, I just want to sing. I was like, give it to Yes! Singing in my flat in Soho. Brilliant. It's lucky I don't live there anymore because everyone would start like going, oh, where do you live? <laughs> don't tell them where I live now. Yeah. Don't tell them where I live now. I've already got rid of two stalkers, so it's good. <laughs> got to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to the questions. I knew this was going to happen. Um, you've had an incredible career already. And from knowing you, I know you're no in it finished. Tell us what your favourite <laughs> gigs were and why. Feel free to drop as many names as you want, because I know you've worked with some really big people. And also, mm -hmm. tell us what your worst gig was. And don't drop names for that one. <laughs> um, you know what? My favourite ever gig, and I have to give a massive shout out to London Pride here, was the first year I did Pride, which was like 2016, I want to say. And this amazing man, Ian Massa Harris, who, if you don't know him, he's an incredible opera singer. Like, 
phenomenal and he helps run this competition called pride in london which i'm a very big part of i'm very much supportive of and he gave me the opportunity to sing on trafalgar square and it was the most mental day of my life like it 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 changed so much because i'd gone from singing in like small pubs or like in the studio and like i'd I'd done i'd done the big like musical tours but when you're in a musical you're playing a part you're not Mm. you're not you so if you don't like my character great cool if you don't like the song i'm singing fine i didn't i didn't write it yeah. <laughs> like yeah so it's it's such a different ball game and then going on a stage and singing something i've written with my band as me is terrifying and probably the most incredible feeling mm-hmm. i cannot describe it because it's you feel like you've ripped your soul out and you're going like it is it okay (laughs) and have thousands of people kind of singing back to you I'm not gonna lie whenever I'm having a kind of crap day and especially with corona life Mm. it's kind of do watch a lot of those videos back and just there's a there's actually a, a video on YouTube of this performance and you can see me halfway through it's just before like the big kind of middle eight bit when I'm going to belt my tits off and I literally just kind of breathe and you're like I'm gonna cry mm. yeah mm-hmm, this this is phew, insane so that's that's definitely my best gig which is weird because it's one of my first but yeah. it was phew, insane my worst gig that is such a hard question because as a performer and you know as a dancer you've done many things where no one's watching <laughs> nope <laughs> You gotta keep going. <laughs> um, I've, I mean, I've done so many like little tours where I'm like, singing my own stuff, and you look out in the crowd, and they're all talking. You could literally just start swearing down the microphone, or yeah. sing flat, or sing Disney songs if you want, and no one would know. Yeah. And I think those are the you have to kind of go. This is just character building, and this is the things I'm gonna laugh about with my friends. <laughs> when I go home. It's funny because it just reminded me of a gig I did so many years ago. I was with a contemporary company and it wasn't my choreography. I was literally just in the company. I was performing. We went on stage and there was one person in the crowd. <laughs> and we still had to do an hour and a half bloody show for one the- person. And yeah, here's the you- killer. They didn't leave in the interval. <laughs> so we had to do the second part. Um. Oh. I probably thought they were doing you a favour. Like, I'm here. I'm I've got to stay. I've got to stay. Like, don't get wrong. The show was actually really good, but the marketing behind the show was atrocious because they were just paid to put the yeah. show on, so no one marketed it. No one. And this is why That's arts funding has gone down. Yeah, and we we have these conversations all the time because yeah. we get, you know, I do. I get very stressed about social media. I think it's quite a toxic place. Yeah. Ironically, we are on now, yeah. but it it can be a toxic place. But at the same time. The only way to promote at the moment is social media. Mm. The only way to sell music, social media. Show and um, TikTok is the world of dancers is is mad. And it's incredible, like it's great, but it's still terrifying because it's like, mm. oh, okay, if you're not promoting yourself, if you're not doing those things, then you're not it kind of sometimes feels like you're not gonna get anywhere. Yeah. Well, I think we were literally it's, talking about it today, weren't we? <laughs> uh, literally. <laughs> That's so funny, that conversation. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, 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 sorry. Moving on. So, you are definitely a triple thread. I've seen you do everything. You are crazy talented. Take take the three disciplines separately. What would you say is the major differences between between all the three different kind of different singing, acting, and dancing? What would you say the biggest difference is when trying to find work? So... I probably should elaborate on that more. Like when you're actually looking for work, going to castings, talking to people, what would you say is the three major differences? Do you know what? It's, maybe this is me being having a bit of a corrupted mind with it, but I kind of found the dance world for me was very, you want to go in and fit in. Like, yeah, you want, if I go to a casting, I want to go I want to look like everyone. I will go on Instagram and I will look at classes and be like, right, what are people wearing to auditions nowadays like what it's very much that you want to go there and see that you could be in a line of girls and you could be here and there it's very kind of that bracket um which for me especially with 
crazy red hair is tends to be a little bit difficult <laughs> um, <laughs> um i find with acting it i've kind of had do you know what? it's bizarre because the acting jobs i've had i always get like cast as like the crazy one wonder why <laughs> what, what 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 would make them do that i don't know um and i always kind of get that vibe like right? i do have quite a high energy mm. i am quite buzzy it takes a lot for me you even know it like it takes a lot for me to be a bit down yeah and so it's always a shock when I am everyone's a bit like oh what's going on um so I do find with acting I kind of I have to do a lot of kind of meditating before I go into any form of acting room because I don't want to come across a arrogant or mm. like crazy or uh big-headed because sometimes a lot of energy can come across as that whereas yeah. actually I'm just a, like, a little puppy um <laughs> whereas standard whereas in I find this is probably why I love singing. My dog's gonna walk past the camera now. Where are you? Where are you going? Is <laughs> um, that like, I'm done with you? I've had head. enough. Stop talking, woman. Stop talking about yourself. Um. Oh, so, but with singing, I find I go into a room and I am me. I find because that's probably why I kind of do resonate with singing a lot. I find that I can be myself. I can find. I find that I push myself and I can be crazy because that's who I am. And singing is my bracket mm. if I hate that concept I hate that yeah. thing we get to but I am a crazy nutter self-confessed self -confessed. yeah and I love I mean I've had it said to me I remember a singing teacher at Conti said to me that she feels after teaching me she has to take a break <laughs> <laughs> she's like because you're so like I want to do this and I want to do that and I'm like yeah that's why I don't sleep like <laughs> exactly it's why we're... um so yeah it's it, i find those kind of things is it's a different world isn't it they all go together but they're all very different they're very different cliques they're very different yeah places to oh, can you... hey sick of me. join I'm in sick of it no i'm gonna sit her up here so she can say hi cute dog, everyone feel free um, to let the dog on so... camera everyone loves a dog on instagram lockdown is making my dogs very needy so. Oh no, when you leave, they're gonna cry. Because oh, they're so yeah. used to it's having you there. I know. Ooh. Do you wanna laugh? I literally just saw a question come up on the thing saying, Are you two a couple? Oh my god, no, we'd freaking kill each other. We would <laughs> Friends that. were amazing. Best friends. But as a couple, yeah, we'd do each other heads and Destroyed. We work because we call each other on our ball. Yeah. Like that's Plus, we, we, we wouldn't have any time for each other, so we'd just be working the whole time. <laughs> right. You go over that side of the room. I'll be on this side of the room. Natalie, shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. No, I saw that come up. No, I thought that was friend... enough. Yeah, that does, that does. That does entertain me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so, too. So, um, obviously, you were doing, you've done Pride like. Yeah every year now and this year's obviously been very different do you want to tell us a little bit more about pride and how you found the experience of doing pride this year and obviously for the people that don't know tell us what was different about this year um so obviously i'm a big ally for pride i always have been i mean um i'm an ally for equal rights that's just who i am i grew up in a place where i guess a kind of naive place where i didn't i didn't even realize homophobia was a thing that that's just kind of naivety on my behalf like my parents have never been anything other than accepting like it's never been a thing and it wasn't until I went to dance college and started experiencing it well seeing it happen for friends of mine that I was like this makes no sense like what and I guess that kind of made me really passionate about it because as a straight woman I've never been questioned as to why I love a man so why it just yeah. it just doesn't make sense not something I can understand um so I kind of got involved with Pride because as well, I've, I've got a lot of gay friends. I've got a lot of bi friends. I've got a lot of trans friends. I've, I know a lot of people and it doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me, like why anyone should be discriminated for any reason. But whatever, um, that's a whole other subject. Um, so I kind of got involved with Pride because I wanted to help. And if there is anything I can do, then why shouldn't we? Mm. It's the same kind of with the BLM movement. It's. If, if we can help, why aren't we, mm. kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I got involved with Pride during Pride's Got Talent, which is what I previously mentioned. 
and every year they do this big if you don't know it's just this big festival all over London there's so many stages it's incredible it's the best weekend and obviously this year thank you corona that was cancelled um so pride in london have been incredible they've done loads mm. of like zoo and releasing things and obviously global pride was all online and you could watch that it was amazing um i did harlow pride yesterday which was so bizarre it was incredible and i'm so grateful for the opportunity to have me but basically i went down to harlow playhouse which i love and <laughs> everyone was covered in ppe <laughs> everyone was like there was no hug no touching <laughs> Um, which was so weird because I was like, hey, oh, hey, hi. <laughs> um, and then I got handed my mic, um, which was all been like sterilized, and everyone had individual mics that were like far away from each other. Each had your own dressing room. I mean, it's taken a pandemic for me to get my own dressing room. So I'll take that. Amazing. Um, living that life. I did get really lonely and I just watched Wondery Hill for about an hour, but you know. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, and then I did my sound check, and then I went on, and it was streamed live over their yeah. Facebook and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So weird because apart from the sound engineers who were really far away, there was no one there. There was no no feedback, no like people dancing. So it was kind of like I was singing, and I was like, I hope this is okay. <laughs> no one. <singing. laughs> There's no interaction whatsoever. <laughs> and it's. Bless the other the other artists who are performing were kind of like in the wings and they were kind of whooping and stuff. But you're like, I really hope this isn't the future of mm. performing because I love, I love even, I've done a song before that I'd literally just written and I went and showcased it at Freedom. And I remember a woman coming up to me, it's about a, a bit of a bad breakup. And this woman came up to me and she gave me the biggest hug and was like, that song me- meant so much to me. It was like, I could have written it. And she was like, thank you for brightening my day. And I was like, that's that's why we do what we do. As entertainers, that's the point. And obviously our government is not really helping like they should be. Mm. And the problem is entertainment helps our mental health so much. As yeah. performers and as audiences. Yeah. You want to escape? You watch. You want to escape? Listen to music. You go to the theatre. You go to a club. It's And it, it was so weird experiencing it yesterday and being like, I love my life and I, I've i missed it so much like the buzz coming off stage and just being like oh I sang like it was so nice but it was so so bizarre like fair play to them for doing it yeah. and like raising my pride it was it was amazing yeah. and I loved it but I miss people, I miss people. yes I think it's, you know, it's the same with um on a, on a slightly lower level it's teaching classes I'm I'm in yeah. my oh. well I'm at my dad's right now in Dorset but in my flat back in where I live <laughs> nearly said it then <laughs> where I live I'm literally just in a space teaching and you know it's, it's there's, yeah. there's no interaction like I, I taught a few classes recently and the software that was being used meant that I can see anyone they can respond back to me they couldn't even message so I was just teaching to a screen I was like I could have pre-recorded this I could have just recorded this and sent it's it like, in no yeah which is actually why yeah. little plug for myself I've developed a platform with a company called DNAces we're creating a crazy interactive live service. But if you want to know more about that, keep an eye on Plug, 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 plug. We always plug. This is what we do. Right. This is what we do. I highly recommend people do this. I've heard all about it several times. So Too many times. Watch out. I still haven't told you everything. No. I, 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 need, I, need, I need to actually talk to you about the big part of it. And even you'll go. As a singer, you'll probably go, can I teach on it? <laughs> well, it's great because obviously you are talking about it and stuff and it is I I said to you like I had I had brunch with my friend Jodie Steele the other day and we were talking about it and my boyfriend who's in Phantom I've told him about it and it's a lot of people are talking about it Mm. which is great not a thing yet nope no one knows anything every single person that speaks to me has to sign an NDA we're keeping it so hush hush now because the thing and I can say I suppose I can say this is I genuinely believe that the things I've helped implement on this platform is going to change the dance industry completely. Right. Completely change how dancers and choreographers make money. Some would agree that is very much needed. (laughs) Can't wait. I can't wait. I'll I'll show you properly someday. I promise. We need to get on a Zoom and I'll show you properly anyway because I trust you after you sign an NDA. (laughs) 
be fair, the amount I know about you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Um... Probably... Years ago. <laughs> Can we, can we can we hit that up? Let's do a mutual NDA. So I can't say anything about you. You can't say anything about me. <laughs> Fair. I'm in for this. Cool. I'm in for this. Right. Jokes aside, let's get a little bit deeper now because I know this is something that's quite um, means a lot to you. So the Me Too movement Ooh. has brought about the change, and then with the Weinstein scandal, has really helped people come forward and speak. And more recently, the UK has seen people in power being outed as people have abused their power. Can you speak a little bit more about any experiences you might have had in the industry or how, and how you dealt with it? Please don't mention names. <laughs> um, I think this is a very sensitive subject. Um, and to be honest, just like the, the Black Lives Matter movement, it's very much still in its, in, in its kind of initial stage. And it's amazing that things are starting to come out. But there's actually a Will Smith quote about racism. And it's like racism isn't getting worse. It's just getting filmed. And it's very much the same with the Me Too movement. It's this has been going on for years, for decades. It's the casting couch. It's it's a it's a catchphrase. It's it's a joke that people talk about. It's the sad thing about the hashtag Me Too is it's come from a place of acceptance. Like a lot of people joke about it and will be like, oh, I bet she slept with him to get that part. Or who did you sleep with to get with that part? Or, oh, I'm being seen by this person. I'll wear a low cut top. It's, it's a very sensitive thing because actually we shouldn't be joking about this. It shouldn't be a thing. This shouldn't be just like, it shouldn't be a thing. You got a part because of your color or you didn't get a part because of your color. It's not, it shouldn't be a thing. It's not acceptable. Um, I have had personal experiences with hashtag me too, in the sense of losing a job over an incident that I stuck up for myself. And the only advice I can give to anyone in a situation similar is be true to you. Like if it doesn't, there are no stakes that are worth it. And if you've got an agent, call your agent, let them know what's happened. Speak to your friends, talk about it the worst thing that happens is the incident that happened to me I spoke to people and they went oh yeah I'm not surprised and I'm like why aren't you surprised and it's it's terrifying how many things get brushed under the carpet or things like that or people are scared to talk up about and it is it's a scary thing and even talking to friends and people are like oh yeah but I wouldn't really tell people just in case I don't want it to affect my job I don't want it to affect being seen I don't want it it's still an abuse of power is yeah. is exactly what you said it's a scary thing and no one should be abusing their power no we are all in this together please like it's it's just a very tricky place because yeah. it shouldn't be a thing and it is and it needs to be it's highlighted and the amount of times i've heard people say oh she's probably exaggerating or yeah but i bet she asked for it or i mean and him uh, not saying just it happens to girls it happens to guys too it's it does. It's a very open thing. It does. We've had these conversations before. Mm. It, it does happen. And it, it needs to be, people need to take responsibility for it. And the people in power need to be called up on it. And it, I get it. It's terrifying. When it happened to me, I, I didn't speak up and tell a lot of people. I told my agent. I told them what happened. I told them what I wanted to do. And I left musical theatre for a bit. It's that's my kind of insecurity and my weakness that I didn't speak up, but it's, it's such a difficult place because I get it. People are scared. People don't want to ruin their reputation. Don't want to be seen as that girl that it happened or that person or be put in that bracket. Mm -hmm. And also don't want to be seen as difficult. Or I've worked with people that have been like, Oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, I, Oh, it was just that. And you're like, if it makes someone feel uncomfortable, it's never just that's, and it's it's the same with racism. It's the same with people making a joke about you're not white enough for this or you're not black enough for this. Even if you mean it as a joke, if you make someone feel uncomfortable, it's not a joke. Mm. It's not okay. It's downright wrong. Well, I suppose it's also the fact that you're in a professional environment. You know, you're not you're not a bunch of friends talking to each other and having a laugh, and you can probably get away with it a little bit more when you're in a casting room, when you're in an audition. You, you, yeah. you're in a professional environment you can't start chatting someone up you can't start making advances towards people because you you know talking as a choreographer as well and 
a lot of the people that have been outed lately are choreographers. So <laughs> I get yeah. that you're in a position of power. And, you know, and then I, I, obviously I can't say any names, but there was someone recently that's been publicly out and it's very, I can't actually say the yes. names it's out, but I'm not going to because that's not what I'm about. And this person yeah. I used to look up to and was an inspiration to me when I first started dancing. So for when I heard it, I yeah. was just like, how long, and, and how long has this been going on for? Apparently about seven, eight years. It's, it's my main thing that I hate is I've been in a situation before in a, in a music sense, in a recording studio place. When I've walked out and gone, I didn't feel comfortable there because of this. And instead of going, I'm not going to work with them again, I went, well, to be fair, I'm wearing a crop top. And you go, huh? Yeah. And it's, again, that was a bit naive. And that was being young. That was being my early 20s. And kind of going, oh, maybe that, maybe I mean a bit of a prude. Maybe he didn't mean it like that. And like you said, it's a work environment. Yeah. Like, and it happens. I'm not saying it's just men to women. It happens across the board. Like, it's because you don't want to offend. You don't want to go, oh, I'm not comfortable with that. Don't do that. Because they'll go, when we'll work with her. But it's, it's something that does come with age and you kind of have to go, no, I'm going to call you up on it. And it, like I said, with the Black Lives Matter movement, the only way to get change is to call people up on it and go, that's not okay. Yeah, We're all going to make mistakes. We all need to learn. And it's all growth and going, oh yeah, sorry. Even if I meant it innocently or flirtly or whatever it is, call someone up on it. Mm. it it's not. Like, it like, um, thing. Yeah, like I said in the article that I put out for Black Lives Matter is let's be generation change where we correct all the wrongs of the past, where we call people up what they've done. And it's, yeah. do you know, I, I can't remember the page name, but there's a page on Facebook that has a list of everything that's changed since the Black Lives Matter movement yeah. and all the laws yeah, that have been it. passed. And if you look at every single one that's been changed, it benefits everybody. It's not just Black Lives, it benefits. It benefits everyone. And that's the great yeah. thing is what's starting to happen now is different parts. It's spreading because people are making a stand. So now everyone's going, wait a minute, we can make a stand. So now they're making a stand in this side of the area, in this race, in this religion, in here, in Me Too movement. You know, it's really, it's really gaining traction lately. And I'm hearing so much more about it. The Weinstein thing on Netflix. Yes. Finally, like everyone. It, ah. um, and so what, what it, advice would you give to any graduates? Because we know what college is like. We know college teach you to shut the hell up do as you're told, you're the lowest of the low, don't, don't yes. speak up, don't speak up, Whatever. don't badmouth an agent, don't talk back to an agent, even though technically they're working for you, but that's a whole other argument. What advice would you give to a graduate who's just come out of college and is discovering yeah. this industry for the first time? Be yourself, because if something makes you uncomfortable, then it's wrong. That's that one thing I have learned over the many years I've been in this industry. If you feel uncomfortable, there's a reason you feel uncomfortable. In regards to an agent, I love my agent. She's an absolute gem and I can call her with a problem. And if I go, I don't think this cast director likes me because of this, this, this and this. She'll go, OK, we'll have a chat. We'll sort this out. Do you need help here? In lockdown, she's called me quite a few times, offered me, been like, I can help you do this, do that. That's a support system. If you're terrified of your agent, it's the wrong agent <laughs> end of anyone will say but also yeah you are taught in college stay in your bubble stay here and if I had have accepted that I mean maybe I'd be in a western show now maybe I'd be doing that but I certainly wouldn't have had the record deals I've had or have my songs playing on the radio I I wouldn't probably be happy because I wasn't being myself yeah. and that's the only thing I can say to people is yeah, don't don't bad mouth people for no reason. Like, don't don't be horrible because the industry is small and we will hear about it. Don't be horrid. Be be wise and be understanding of other people. But at the same time, stick up for yourself and know your self worth. Like, if you go to an audition and you're treated badly, you're gonna be treated badly in that job. Yeah. No, no, just know your worth and also don't be big headed about it. Like, don't be like. Because I do agree, there is no small parts. No, there's yeah, there's no, there's no small parts, only small actors, whatever it is. Everything is worth it, and everything is fun. But don't don't go somewhere and think you're better than anyone. Don't do that. Be level headed, but also don't let people knock you down because they will mm. try. And I'm I'm going to uh, add to that as well because communication. 
Now, spe yes. speaking from a choreographer's position, you know, if I found out after the fact that someone felt uncomfortable in my company, I'd be devastated. Yes. So I would say yes. for a graduate, if you feel uncomfortable in a situation, say so. Because actually the guy, girl might not know. You know, it's a very yes. touchy-feely industry. It's a very huggy, you know, we're very close as an industry. And as dancers especially, we're constantly lifting, touching each other, and it's just the norm. So if you are put in a position where you feel uncomfortable, say so, just in case that person doesn't know, rather than running away and smearing someone's like reputation. Because that's a scary bit. And actually, Sam, yeah. when I spoke to Sam Cassidy, who I know you know really well, um, we touched on it. And I, I said, you know, another advice is don't be a dick. And it was, it was meant as a tongue-in-cheek when I said it. <laughs> but he quickly pulled me on it, which was really good of him to say, also... Don't quickly judge, because I've known people that have said something, done something, it's been taken completely out of context. And then on every job, yeah. they're hearing the same thing and their reputation's been scarred for years. So communicate, oh, God, know yeah. the facts, and I still stick to don't be a dick. <laughs> Both ends of the scale. Because obviously you, you're, as a choreographer, you cast people, you do that. And I've been on casting panels for jobs. And you go oh I've seen you before and you weren't very good we all have bad days and that's mm. something as you get older you kind of go do you know what we're all gonna crack there'll be one day where that left leg just doesn't get there there'll be times when you just don't get that pirouette they'll do you know what I mean or you'll go what did I do in my freestyle tell me I didn't do the robot that will happen <laughs> right I can literally picture you going nip, nip, nip. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, again, for the podcast listening, we literally imitated the uh, robot. So go and watch it on YouTube. It's funny. It's happened. Like, I'm a trained dancer. I have gone to auditions where I've learned the choreography and then it's come to the small groups of four and you go, I don't remember a single thing that guy just taught. And it's going to happen. Don't beat yourself up about it. Like, it's going to happen. We're not perfect. But at the same time, creatives need to understand that and need to go see them again. Obviously, if they turn up every time and it's bad, I get it. Yeah, it is. I am in the sense of your reputation in the industry is yeah. so important, and the second you get known as difficult or bad, mm. it can really destroy you. Yeah, like, and yeah. it does, and it doesn't take a lot, does it? This is what we've realised and oh. spoke about over the years. It only takes a few little rumours, and that goes. And the, obviously, the argument is every time you tell one person, they tell three, and that yeah. very quickly grows into a massive pyramid of people that hear about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, even you and me have a little kind of discussion about people every now and again, obviously. But then I now know. Yeah. So then when a friend of mine says, oh, we're going to be working with so-and-so, it's like, oh, I've heard stuff. Yeah. Because I don't but want my it, friend to end up in a bad position. Yeah, which is kind of part of the problem. But at the same time, you kind of go, it is kind of makes up your own mind mm. about people. And if, like I said, if you've had a bad experience with someone, kind of be, take it into perspective. Have they, are they really been bad? Or... Could you go, they're in a bit of a bad mood. I'll give them another chance. Mm. If they were downright racist or homophobic, then bye. But May... Yeah, that's a whole other ball game. But then I but suppose, it, yeah, just, just to kind of play devil's advocate a little bit, the minute you enter that room, on. you're meant to be professional and leave the stuff at the door. That's what I've been taught my whole life, is you leave anything at the door. When you're in that room, you are a dancer, singer, actor. That's it. Oh, my God, yeah. Make up your own mind about people is kind of the thing. Yeah. But then, on the other side, I've been in a situation when it's actually quite recently and they were casting dancers for a show I was in and they were like, we're not sure about this boy. Don't know. He's a graduate. Don't know. And randomly one of us knew a connection. So we called that person and we were like, they've worked for you. And she gave a glowing review of this guy. Mm. I worked with this guy for four weeks. I was his dance captain and I can hand on heart say I've never worked with a more confident experienced dancer like i i would i would put him literally if anyone said they needed a dancer mm. like him i'd be like yeah because he was incredible so and it was but it's just kind of you when you don't know someone or you yeah. kind of do that whole thing of going, just graduated like are they going to be able to do this job they're going to look at reviews it's a whole thing with social media mm. as well people go oh, i don't really know who she is i'll look on their socials yeah and you make a job We've had this conversation before. You go on their Instagram and you go, mm, Well, literally, I what, half an hour before this, we were there's a job that um, I'm trying to get Natalie into as a singer. 
And the job, the owner came back to me going, can you get the prices and send me their Instagrams? <laughs> That's your audition. <laughs> mad. It is mad. Don't, they don't want to talk to you. They, they just want to see your Instagram. That's it. Yeah. Which is just... It's crazy. It's a crazy, yeah. crazy world we're living in. But I suppose but that also in, so. kind of enforces what I've always taught for the last few years is treat your social media like your website. If you wouldn't put yeah. it on your website, don't put it on your social media, especially drunk what photos. Want, I've, I've got friends who have got like private accounts and then public accounts, which yeah. is a professional one. Yeah. You, If you want to post a million selfies or mm. whatever, or you're drunk on nights out constantly, you need to do that privately away from the people who are going to cast you so yeah. kind of sticking on the graduate theme should we say is this industry is just full of rejection that's something that's never going to go you know that, that's not that's that's just going to be here for good because no matter what there's going to be 500 people for one job almost every audition so it's always going to be rejection so how have you learned to deal with rejection and what tips could you give to again a graduate coming into the industry do you know what? It's really tricky because at Conti's, there was 83 in my year. That's a, that's a big year. And so I kind of had to deal with rejection from the get-go because 83 in your year, but yet there'd be five leads in a show. So, it, and at first it was heartbreaking and I get it. Like I get it when you want something so bad mm. and you don't get it. And it's so easy to take personal like, it is so, I do it. I used to do it all the time. And I'd be like, I'm not good enough. I'm not this enough. And then I was asked to be on a casting panel. And I remember sat there and there was one girl and I was like, she is incredible, like, hands down. And the casting director being like, she's too tall. And I was like, what? She's like, it, she won't look right. And I was like, she's insane. And they're like, yeah, but the other girl who's already got it, who will match her. And you're like, that's the weirdest reason. And, yeah. and then being and people going, yeah, we do really like her, but it's just this. And, and you're like, it's not a personal thing. It really isn't. Yeah. Like, and it's so hard because there are days, and I've had it. I had, I mean, I, I told you, like, I, I lost a song a couple of weeks ago that I really wanted. And it it kind of did. I sat there and I was, I was watching a film with my family and I, I found out and I was like, mm, I, could, I could cry here or I could be, thank you so much for the opportunity. I want to work with you in the future. It's just not for me right now. That's going to be for someone else. That that moment is for someone else. And that's okay. Mm. Like, it's rejection comes hand in hand with the ups. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you didn't get rejected, you wouldn't be as excited for all the jobs yeah. you do get. And there are a lot of jobs out there. There's also a lot of performers. And sometimes it's just not your time. And that's okay. You just got to keep going. The main thing is don't doubt yourself. Yeah. If you... Okay, if you go into a room and you're like, I didn't do my best, okay, fine. Just yeah. you need to keep prepping. It's, just, it's one of them days. Don't beat yourself up about it. I've done auditions where I've gone in and cracked. We've all done it. Like <laughs> big auditions that you work yourself up about and then you go in and you're like, that was awful. <laughs> I did an audition at the beginning of the year and literally I walked out and went, wow, mm, that was that was good. Well done, Matt. But, <laughs> You're going to get them. You, and all, what you need to do is you either you grab yourself a Domino's or you grab yourself a tequila and you move on. I'm with the Domino's all the way and a beer, I'll be honest. Tequila's all you. Uh, you can have that. Uh, I had a Domino's last night. Though. That's why it's on my brain. So I had, um, I had an Indian last night and it was amazing. And we got it for free. <laughs> why? So basically, I'll tell you very quick because this is very much your interview, not mine. Me and my dad ordered an Indian, and obviously we called up an hour later saying, hey, it hasn't arrived yet. Oh, we've sent it out, it's on its way. Called another half an hour later, they realised that they hadn't even made it. So then the oh. manager made it, ran it to us, gave us a free bottle of wine. Don't drink wine, but never mind, it's the present for somebody now. <laughs> Do you like red wine now? Do you want some? Thank you. Bring that over. <laughs> and yeah, it ended up being the nicest Indian I've had for a very long time. And then I felt super Ooh. guilty for getting it for free. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that was the reason because I thought you were going to say social influencer and I was going to slap you. Oh, no, I did post about it, though. <laughs> and I called them. I oh. even called them. I just wanted to say how nice the food was and thank you so much for being understanding. Oh. 
Because I felt guilty. Yeah. No, I'm so glad you did that because that is the best thing. Because you, everyone is so, so quick to go, that was shit. But no one ever gives that go, that was amazing. So well done to you. Good for that. Hey. Right. Are you ready for this last question? So everyone gets asked this at the moment because it's obviously the topic of conversation is, let's talk about the state of the industry right now. Rona. Corona. What's Good old Rona. I've never heard of that. It's, it's a new thing I heard about earlier and I thought I'd chuck the question in. What do you think has been the biggest impact on the industry and why? Oh, it's difficult because it, it, it's a really eggy subject yeah. because let's be honest, the government needs to help us. It's, we were the first out and we are currently going to be the last back in. Mm. And it's terrifying. And actually, me and Jodie were talking about this the other day and saying, like, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and believe that it's over, the West End is done. Rah, rah, rah. That's, that's not true. But we and we as as performers, we are the most adaptable to being out of work. Like I all the time, I'm like, oh, I've got my muggle job, all this because there are times when we don't have work come in and yeah. it's it's a scary place, but at the same time, it's it's also been a great time for performers because I know mean, that's controversial, but for me personally, I've, I've my confidence has been building because I'm not being mm. around yeah. the toxic environment that I'm putting myself in, and that I'm now aware that I was putting myself in places where I was working and people didn't know my worth or were putting me down as a performer, and actually I'm like, oh. I don't I don't care about that. I don't want that. Yeah. And I mean, I am quite self my kind of ways because as a singer songwriter, I'm working with a lot of incredible DJs and producers who send me stuff and I record it. It's difficult. I'm, I'm currently writing a song with the H2O boys. Do you remember H2O? I do. <laughs> Embarrassed like, to say. I, I I mean, they are brilliant. That song Oh no, I meant because of my age. <laughs> with you um but they're they're having a big comeback and we're writing a brand new song together and it's taking longer because we're not in a session together but at the same time it's making the song better because i'm i'm doing it over weeks instead of yeah. a couple of days and i mean big up to h3 boys they're so patient with me when i'm like i just can't look at my laptop today it's doing my head in or garage band hates me i'm leaving it so it's for me it's been great because I am realising who I want to work with. And I love Billy and Eddie, who I've done the songs with before. Incredible people who are giving me more opportunities and going, right, we're in this situation together. Come on. And that's one thing I've realised with Corona is you are kind of sticking to the people who help you and people who you want to speak to and going, hold on, how can I help you? How can I, let's do this together because we're all, we're all in this and we all know that entertainment, like I said earlier, is kind of, a hub it's to talk to anyone in the world and go did you watch a single thing on netflix during corona did you listen to any music if they say no they're lying they're lying through their it's, teeth yeah entertainment is when i'm having a bad day sometimes i'm having a bad day i can't listen to music because i'm so passionate about it but i'll watch netflix i'll i'll read a book these are all entertainment things i will i'll listen to a podcast i'll do something and Corona has kind of really highlighted that. And I'm seeing so many amazing artists kind of coming out with incredible music during lockdown. Like um, um, Sinead Harnett has released this incredible song about lockdown. Um, A girl actually I recently met, Camden Cox, has released this amazing song. Like, I mean, Hayley May's just smashing out the park and releasing banger after banger. And you. (laughs) I'm trying. No, it's as in your lockdown song, Quarantining, which I feature in, by the way, people, just so you watch it. He's like this. I don't know. I guess. what I don't know. It's something I, like that. I was mm, well, just doing a, a little dance with my Brendan impression, trying to be down with the kids. Um, <laughs> that's one of the TikTok things, you know. <laughs> Here we go. Da, ha. Da, da, there you go. Da, da. <laughs> so, for all the podcast people, we are just embarrassing ourselves. Yeah, yeah, go, go watch a video, you'll laugh. I mean, yeah, it is amazing. And actually seeing how many people are supportive of each other and going, yes, come on, it's it's amazing. Um, and 
I just really hope the government kind of, I mean, I'm hearing that they might be making an announcement this week about things, but I'm also hearing a lot of people who aren't getting funding, who don't qualify for no reason for the grants and stuff that are being given. And it's scary. And it's kind of going, right, how can I help? What, what do you need me to do? And it's incredible seeing so much strength from performance. Mm. So, yeah, I'm I'm kind of hoping that the government are going to pull their finger out their well, bum. Do you know what? On, on, on the back of what you were saying, and it's actually quite positive what you're saying, which is a relief because a lot of people are so negative right now and so like, oh, it's over, it's done, oh. then no one's going to reopen. And, you know, one thing that Stuart Bishop said was these producers are millionaires. They're not going to lose their money. They're going to find a way to get it back and running and make that money back fast. From the government side, I'm a bit more sceptical because there's – they've got no money anymore. They're going to have to get some 600 billion loan to cover everybody. Like obviously everyone who's self-employed has got the grant. Uh, There's the furlough scheme. And the arts is always, always the first thing to go. If you go back to not the recession, but uh, the hard times that were happening with the government many years ago, the arts council funding got cut by over half. Oh, good. Yeah. It's the first thing to go and it's the last to come back in. And it's terrifying because it's it's so important but I mean as yeah. you know like in South Korea in Phantom um which is incredible really proud of him hate the fact he's in Korea and I can't see him but you know cool great I'm proud um but they are <laughs> they've been in the, the papers because obviously they had there was a, a cast member that got corona and the government shut the show down for two weeks they all the all the performers quarantined the government looked after them like they were sending them food parcels they were amazing and then the show reopened and is now extended which obviously is amazing for the show crap for me but amazing for the show and it's kind of that bit of hope that kind of goes people are doing this right we just need to listen and go right okay that's how we do it yeah and another thing you touched on as well is lockdown for me and I think we've had this conversation, has really shone a light on who, one, your real friends are, two, like you said, who you want to work with, um, time to reflect, to be confident, to build on yourself. And the reason I think that's so important is because there is no pressure to get work right now because no one's getting work. Oh. Doesn't a bit. And you oh. said a really lovely thing about getting yeah. rid of toxicity. And I feel like we've both done this. Oh, and we've both pushed that toxicity out of our life. And I've been watching both of us over the last few months just – on fire like the things we're both doing is insane and super proud to be your friend oh God, if you, like, yeah if you look at the state of both of us beginning of the year right to now yeah it's like i, I mean i said this to you i was like there will be a change there will something will click and i know like work was really slow at the beginning of the year and it was really scary and now like literally we can't get hold of each other and it's or like we speak and we're like, right, literally yesterday, I was like, you've got half an hour because I'm doing this, this, this and this, but you've got half an hour. And like, blah, 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 blah. cool, great. And that was because you're only in the car. <laughs> you're on speaker. Tell me about it. It's, it, I mean, I, you're right. It's Corona really has shown who your true friends are. And also at the same time, I do believe don't test a friendship because of a pandemic. Mm. Like if you haven't heard one, it's not because they don't care. It, everyone's dealing with their own shit in this situation. I totally agree with that. At the same time, I know there's people that if I went, for instance, my friend Jodie, I was having a really bad time and I was like, I'm really struggling. And she was like, come over. I'll cook you brunch. We had a lot. She burnt my pastries, but we had a lovely time. So for instance, and like, I've got two of my friends from Reading. They were like, and I said to them, I'm really struggling. And this was before, this was a few weeks ago. And you know me, I was very panicky about being around people and the world. And they were like, let's go meet in a park and we can chat. And I was like, oh, my God, yeah, I need that. And actually haven't heard from you in ages. And I haven't spoken to you in ages, but you're there. And I think that's Corona's kind of really shown that who's there for you, who's supporting you in the industry as well. I've got I mean, a massive shout out to Billy the Kid and Eddie Craig because those boys put up so much of me. They are incredible producers. They are so busy. I mean, Billy's about to have a baby. And yet the amount of times I call him and I'm like, is this going to happen for me? I miss being in a studio. I miss seeing people. It like I'm getting forgotten about. Who even am I? I'm no one. Blah, blah. And he'll literally. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> it's so true. And he'll tell me to shut up, and then tell me all the amazing things. And again, my boyfriend in Korea does it, and it's it's amazing to be around people who go right, come on. And 
if any of them comes out of lockdown that's good it's that everyone's kind of realizing who they are and getting rid of people and going nah I don't I don't want to be around that anymore mm. and you know and obviously the the events of everything changing right now like we spoke earlier with the Black Lives Matter movement Black, Black Lives Matter movement yeah. and everything else that's happening it's really highlighting and <laughs> I don't know how to say this without sounding a bit off People are really showing some true colours. I think that's the best way I can yeah. say it. And it's it's Again. it's honestly shocked me in some cases. Yeah. Like really shocked me that like, I didn't expect certain things from people. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah. It's and like silence is no longer acceptable. Like silence to racism is racism. Silence to um, harassment is you're supporting the harassment. That's what it is. And it's like it's terrifying and also and I, I agree with you I've had people who I respect in the industry who I want to work with and I go oh my god I I can't I don't ever want to work with you and that's that's probably a detriment to me but I mm. no I don't want to be associated or I don't want this and it's standing up for yourself and others because yeah. if you're not going to stand anyone stand up for yourself perfect way to end together. and we literally let the count the, the timer thing has just dropped down for me you've got one minute 40 so I'm gonna to start to wrap up uh, is there anything else you would like to say? Give some plugs, talk about your Spotify, talk about what's coming up. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to plug everything you can. Go. Oh, God. Okay, well, obviously, head over to my YouTube. I'm doing a lot of covers at the moment and just kind of keep myself busy. So be kind, guys. There's a few random covers on there and I'm uploading stuff as we go along. But I'm also writing a few new songs with Billy, Eddie and the H2O boys, which I've already spoken about. Um, and a guy called Leroy, who you all will be hearing about very soon. So yeah, just keep an eye on my Spotify. I'm um, at Nat Gray Music and on Spotify, Natalie Gray. Come say hi. Amazing. I'm quite fine. Blessed. So no, I'm just gonna say thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the live. Um, like I always Thanks. say to everybody listening, this is it's not really about this actual live. It's more about the production afterwards. So it gets sent into a YouTube video, an IGTV video, and it also goes out as a podcast. So it's gonna be there forevermore for people to go and watch, <laughs> listen, and do whatever they like with. So massive thank you, darling. Love you to pieces. And I did mention my quarantining song. Guys, I wrote that with We Are Moonwalker. They're incredible. It's on Spotify. It's on YouTube. Please donate to the NHS. We got this. And Brendan is dancing in it. It's very entertaining. Peace out. <laughs>